have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD. Oversized Delta. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. First thing we're going to do is just look at the wires. Um. I decided to dig around, see what kind of wires I had, because I really want to get these wires down the center of these rails. And so I looked around, I found some different types of ribbon cables that I've taken off things over a certain amount of time, the last several years or longer. And basically this this uh, ribbon wire, the ribbon cable, there's a couple different uh, kinds. The colored stuff is a different coating than the blue kind. That wire right there is actually a piece of coaxial, so each one of those blue wires is a coaxial cable, which uh, is very for very low voltage. Um, this wire right here is actually what I'm going to be using for my motors. It's a pretty decent gauge. I think it's 22. Uh, could even be 20. And then here's another type of ribbon cable. This ribbon cable is coated in something else. It looks very, very robust but it's also spaced out and got a really thick coating on it which I'm trying to compact as many wires into one space as I can so that's not the most helpful thing ever but it is definitely more durable which I like a lot so yeah that's a brief overview so here's what it looks like when I try to pack these things in here and basically I'm trying to just get all as many wires as I can in here and uh, yeah we'll go from there this video isn't really wire pertained but at least you can see what I'm doing. Oh, it's an early morning. I forgot to turn on my lights. There we go. So, what's up, everybody? Today is actually the 18th uh, of July. 18th of July, it is uh, six, just after six in the morning. I have not worked on the OSD for literally months. Too many other projects, things, and stuff going on. Um, piddling around with it but not really working on it so today is the day we're gonna do electrical but believe it or not we gotta do some machining first so as I stated in the beginning one of my criteria for this project was make sure you can't see any wires and so that's what we're gonna do we got some things to cut some problems going on and I'll explain that as we go but first we gotta dismantle this thing here we go let's do it Alright, so we've dismantled this thing, and it looks pretty good so far. Um, basically, I've taken off all the wiring and anything I need to to access the bolts and nuts and things. So, briefly, let's look you know, at some of the issues. Um, first of all, we've got these wires going into the uh, Hall effect sensors for the end stops. And those actually go up through the... Uh, you can see it, but they actually go up through the bolt hole and then they they come out of the top and let's see if I can see one of these they come out of the top and it's just terrible so I'm gonna be putting a hole through the here so I can get all the way through the top and then also the wiring for these I actually want them to come out the top so I gotta drill a hole for those and then I'm actually going to be putting slots in, in these areas so I don't have to worry too much. But here's the other problem. If I wanted to run a wire through the center of this, which I'm going to, I'm going to actually put the wires in the centers. If you ask me why I'm not going to put it on the outside and stuff, because I literally don't want to see them. So you can s clearly see with this guy missing, you can see what the inside of this looks like. And if you had a wire that filled up the entire center channel, for instance on this guy you can see how that's cut into the channel or into that center hole so that center hole and these channels are too deep so I actually have to take each one of these aluminum pieces I don't think they go deep enough to hit the bolt head they just go deep enough to hit the aluminum so I'm gonna go ahead and put two of these aluminum pieces inside this little jig and put it in the milling machine here and drill a hole out in there so I can actually make sure that these 
are a bigger diameter than what the hole is here so I don't catch on them when I put my wires through there. Now I'm sort of shooting myself in the foot because in order to take this apart I'd have to pull all the wires back out. But I don't think I'm ever going to need to take this apart. I think it will be just fine. So that's the goal. So let's just mark and then dismantle all of this. So we'll mark all of our pieces. I may actually eventually cut these off. I actually think I want these a little bit shorter. I haven't decided yet, but I think I want them a little bit shorter. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave them long. And if I have to dismantle this thing to change things, I will. These are a good, a good distance. I like the way these are. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're completely dismantled. Those I can put completely away. <clears throat> these I'm gonna have to drill and mill and drill and mill. Uh, after looking at these, I'm probably gonna have to clean these up a little bit because of the, uh, because of the way that is in there, if it would focus. There we go. I'm going to have to clean that up so we can get wires through there. And again, we'll have to mill these guys out on the edges, drill them out with one of these empty blocks. Let's do it. Okay, so I've gotten three of these done. I thought I would just sort of show you what they look like. So I've cut a slot in here. It is just bigger than this hole. So if I did want to push anything through here, I could, but I don't plan on it. I plan on coming straight through and out the bottom. However, if I really wanted to, I could also force it through this way, but the wire I'm going to be putting through there, I don't think that's going to work. So we're going to have to make this work the way I've got it. I got these three done. Now on these, I actually have to make the slots slightly bigger. And the reason that I made the slots instead of holes is because if I did want to move the arms, then I can still move them around and have enough play in here to uh, not worry about getting my wire pinched off. Because that may come to a point where I want to adjust everything a little bit and then I won't be able to. So that allows me to. So on this one, I got to drill it a little bit bigger because the wire going down to the um, um, hall effect switch or hall sensor is actually going to be through one of the bolt holes and not necessarily through the center. So I'll have to make that a little bit a little bit bigger basically to make sure it fits that hole way over here. Okay, got those three done. One slot for the motor, one slot for the wire, and one slot for the other wire for our sensor. So, should be just right. Now we gotta drill holes in these, because you gotta remember these plates go across the bottom, like this. So if we don't drill a hole in the middle, well, frankly, we can't get the wires through. It's gonna be a pain. Okay, well that's that. Well, those turned out pretty good. That's actually fairly soft material. So now we're gonna take our reamer tool, our, uh, uh, I forgot what it's called. Anyway, take our uh, deburring tool, there we go, and put a nice deburred edge on there. So we don't have to worry about wires pinching. But yeah, that's about all I got time for today. We will continue tomorrow. Oh, welcome back to the next day. Today's the 19th. 
Okay, so I got these little adapters. That's uh, how these whole things get held together. This is just an extra little piece cut off. And so I want to run the wires to the center of this hole. Um, and I, I absolutely think it's going to work just fine. However, these little things stick in just a little bit. You can see that right there. So they do have a little bit of play, not much, but they do stick too far. So I'm gonna use this cut off, which was a piece cut off from a scrap that I used. And I'm gonna basically drill those out just ever so slightly bigger than the hole. In case they're off to set like left or right a little bit. So I'm gonna use this as my jig, clamp this in there and, you know, drill these out. Okay, there they are, all cut so that now they fit. Some of them actually fit uh, like they look like they got cut out just a tiny bit and then some of them did not. Oh, well, where are some? Just a couple of them. So I took my knife and deburred all the edges so there's no sharp edges. And again, the hole is bigger than the other channel so they should be recessed. On to the next step. All right, so we need to deburr the center holes and then again, those, those extra nonsense pieces that are sort of floating in there need to be uh, removed. So we'll probably do that with the drill bit or something. We'll see. And of course the deburring tool for the holes. Okay, well I drilled those out and then I took a file and I filed them all the way around on the inside the best I could possibly get. Because unfortunately, there's some sharp edges in there, but now you can definitely get down in there straight through the hole. So I'll need to clean these up a little bit better. And I'm actually thinking about putting some plastic in there, like a plastic straw or something to keep it from cutting as you pull it through because the edges they could potentially still be pretty sharp so we'll see okay so i spent the time deburring the inside of these holes in here the best I could using one of these tools, which is just a three-pointed, really sharp edge. Can't really cut you, but does really good with this stuff. So I was able to sort of get in there and actually cut those just a little bit. I'll still probably put some other stuff in there for precaution, but I just did the inside edge. I did both of these and then just the inside edge on this one because the wires will be going that way. Oh, a lot of those. All right, here is an assembly. Oh, the light's not gonna work out for us, is it? There we go. It is, uh, it is going to be a challenge, but the, the wire is gonna come in through this channel, in, down through that channel. It's doable but it's not gonna be the easiest thing. I think a, a plastic insert for this side is gonna be the best option. Okay, so I've de-shielded that wire, or decoded it. And then I took out the grounding wire. I don't necessarily need the grounding wire. So here's the wire as is with the aluminum sheath on it. You can see it's actually, uh, the two colors are actually separated in there on two different sheaths. 
So anyway, so now we can move forward with that, but uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so I've taken this wire and I have cut it into three sections and I really need to find one more for the extruder motor. So I'll, I got some more cables similar to this or I'll find something that I like. Uh, this is a little bit heavier gauge than um, what I see some people using and I like that. It's a little bit bigger than what's on the motors so we can uh, have enough current to our motors with long leads and not be concerned about loss, too many losses. So anyway, all the pieces are ready, ready to go. Things are in shandles and little pieces everywhere. Look at that mess. That's a mess. Okay, well, that's it for this video. I think I'll cut it here and we'll move on to the wiring another day. We got lots to do, but uh, we'll get there and yeah. It's going to be a treat, but it's going to be worth it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Peace.